It was March 19th, 2016. I remember it like it was yesterday. I was in Las Vegas, Nevada with some of my friends and you know, just having a good time. First weekend of March Madness, one of the busiest times in Las Vegas. And I just got done eating Panda Express and you know, I was going to meet my friends, getting ready to go to a pool party, uh, start my day. And as I walked over to the Aria Hotel, um, where they were and where I was meeting them at, I walked through the door and all of a sudden there was this instant like pull, like this woof. As soon as I walked through the door, like this instant aura, this instant chemistry. And as I looked up, I just saw these big green eyes, these big old cheeks and this beautiful smile from the most beautiful woman I had ever seen in my life. And she was staring at me and I was staring at her and it was one of the most like compelling things I have ever went through in my life. And as I approached her, my palms were sweaty, my hands were shaking a little bit, and I was nervous. And I just, I, it, something was just different about her and about the whole situation that just got me nervous. And as I approached her and I asked her her name and where she was from, she told me her name and told me that she was from Michigan. And that's exactly where I was from. And it was just crazy that two people from the same state would be out in Vegas during one of the busiest times of the year and run into each other and just have this instant attachment and an instant chemistry that I never had felt before. And it was one of the, the best moments in my life at the time because I was going through a lot of things in my life at the time uh, before I met her. You know, my father had passed away earlier in the year. I was having uh, problems, you know, with the job I had and I was just, ugh, I was just going through a struggle and I just felt instant relief when I met her. So when we transitioned back from Las Vegas to Michigan, we were only two hours away from each other. Um, we spent the next few months getting to know each other, building a friendship, building a relationship. And ultimately, we started to grow and build a family. Um, she got pregnant. Um, she already had two kids prior to us uh, meeting. I had two kids as well prior to us meeting. Now we're having one together. So we went from two kids to five. And it was just a crazy transition for everybody involved. And... You know, at the time, I was living in Grand Blake, Michigan, right outside of Flint. I was coaching my son's uh, AAU basketball team. I was also coaching high school football. Um, I was attending my daughter's soccer games, her volleyball games, going to all of their school events. So I was heavily involved in my kids' lives. And, you know, during this time, I was working a construction job for a restoration company, um, doing drywall and, and you know, siding and, you know, just restoring houses, things like that. And they actually gave me an opportunity to move from Grand Blank, where I was at, to Kalamazoo, where Kim lived, and because they had a project that they needed to start. And, you know, I really, really had to think about it and, and sacrifice my, you know, time with my kids in order to make this transition and to make the relationship that I felt so great about I, to make that work. So I decided to move to Kalamazoo. Um, about three months later, we had our son Grayson. Everything was just great, awesome. We, our families were blended. Everybody was getting along. Our, my relationship was taking off. Um, we, were, we were building for our future. We were, you know, we were budgeting and planning and, you know, planning for the future, trying to get our life together buy a new house, all kind of things. And as I returned to work, um, after my son was born, just two weeks after he was born, the third day I returned from work, I was actually fired from my job. And that was probably, it was probably one of the hardest things I had to go through in my life because you know, I really, really felt embarrassed. I felt embarrassed as a man because I could no longer provide for my family. I couldn't, you know, go see my kids. 
couldn't pay for gas to see them. I couldn't pay any bills. I couldn't do anything because I no longer have income coming in. And I was in a new relationship with someone that I met that now I have to go tell that I no longer have a job and how is she gonna look at me now? And I'll never forget the day when I got fired. I went home and I talked to Kim and I told her that I got fired. What she said, I'll never forget what she said. She said, Marcus, it's okay. We'll be fine. God has a different plan for you. You just have to find something that you're passionate about, that you love to do, that is really going to make you happy in order to, to really bring out the, the potential that you have. You have a, a, a very bright future. And just hearing that reassurance from her and really, really getting that support from her really, really changed my mental and my psyche of exactly you know, who I wanted to be and what I wanted to do as a man and as a father. Um, I wanted to be able to, to really, really make more money and spend time with my family and travel and, you know, uh, really, really see the world like we had planned about. Uh, but really deep down, I just wanted to be a better, better father and a better provider for my family because I had never been that you know, at that time in my life. Um, you know, I had my girlfriend paying all the bills. Every day she would wake up, you know, uh, get her kids ready for school, get herself ready for work. And she would leave and she would go work and provide and, you know, for our family to make sure that we have food on the table, that our bills are getting paid. And every day it just, you know, hurt to see her working so hard and I felt like I really, really needed to do something in order to, to, to make that change. Then I remember one day my buddy called me and him and I had been in a network marketing company together before. It was a health and wellness company. And him and I felt that we got in it too late at the time where we got in it. It was kind of saturated. It already had been, you know, kind of plateaued. It was kind of on its way downhill. And he was telling me that the owners of that particular health and wellness company actually started a new company and it was, they were having a pre-launch coming up here in a week or so and that I should come because we could get on the ground floor running and, you know, start at the beginning. And, you know, as someone who's been in network marketing before and someone who's been in telemarketing and door-to-door -door sales, you knew it was that, you know, that MLM script. And, you know, he had his upline leader on the other line, so he three-wayed them in, and both of them were just talking to me and just letting me know how I should, you know, really, really get involved and invest in this opportunity because, you know, it was just launching. And at the time, I asked him, you know, is this a pyramid scheme? Is it, you know, why do I have to pay money in order to get started? You know, do I really have to contact y'all, my family and friends in order to make this work? Like, how is this really gonna be a passive income for me? Because I, I at this time, my girl is paying all the bills. I have five kids to take care of. I'm at home taking care of my, you know, little baby. And I didn't have the money in order to do that. So, you know, I hung up the phone. A couple of days later, my buddy called me, come, Marcus, come on, man, with your personality and everything, man, I, I know we can do this. It, they just starting on the ground level, man. Get to Orlando, man. I'll even pay for half of your ticket. And I remember I talked to Kim about, about it you know, about a week later. I flew down to Orlando. And I just remember when I was there, I mean, it was thousands of people here, you know, a lot of millionaires inside of the room and a lot of yelling and screaming and enthusiasm going on. And it was just, it just got me excited about this opportunity and what MLM could bring to the table because I just knew the power that it could bring if you were able to, to do it right. And, you know, after leaving that event in Orlando, I came home and, and told Kim that, you know, we, I can go all in with this. So I, I made a list of all my family, my friends, my aunts, my uncles, my cousins, uh, my high school friends, middle school friends, elementary school friends. 
and you know, I called, I text, I Facebook messenger people, Instagram messenger people, no matter, you know, however I can get in contact with you, I, I, I needed to touch base with you in order to get them in this opportunity. And I spent a whole month just grinding and attacking people. It's so funny because actually my friend who got me involved were, we were actually contacting the same people. So we, they were getting hit from me, they were getting hit from him. And it was just kind of one of those like, oh my goodness, people were tired of hearing from me. And I have a lot of soured and bad relationships still because of that, because I needed people to sign up so I can make money. And I was, I, I was forcing it down people's throat and they didn't like that. And I recruited two people my first month. One was my mom and the other one was my brother. And my brother had no idea of what he just signed up for. And after that, I ran out of leads. So I went to the upline so, so guys and was like, okay, what else do I need to do in order to get leads? And they were like, you know, you gotta have home party, you gotta have a hotel meeting, you have to go, you know, grind and hustle and meet people out and bring them to meetings and, you know, but as a, a, a father of five and, you know, I didn't have time to do what they were asking me to do. Like, how could this be passive income? That model that you're talking about, talking to your family and friends, that's not passive income. That's not really how this business can work. How can you call that passive income? Is what I really, really wanted to know and ask myself. So once again, here I am feeling like a failure because my business collapsed. I had no money coming in. I just lost money, wasting money. Uh, but one of the biggest things that really stuck in my mind when I went through that whole process was, you know, how was it that the top MLMers or the top network marketers in the industry, what were they doing that was so different than the people down here that, you know, like me, that, you know, were failing? Like, how were they making all the money? What was the difference? Um, so I, I quit MLM and I told myself, you know, I really, really need to figure out exactly what they're doing. So, you know, for the next year and a half, I purchased courses and really dove deep into, you know, exactly what these guys were doing. And I tell you one thing, you know, they weren't doing home, home parties, they weren't doing hotel meetings, uh, unless they were at events, and they weren't doing the three-way phone calls. But, you know, the one thing that all of these guys had, they all had their own products, they all had their own websites, they all had their own lead generating products that, you know, they approach people who are already interested online, bringing them to their own lead generating products and then soft pitching them the MLM or the network marketing company on the back end. And, you know, when I started to see the pattern, I started to see that every top network marketer was doing this. I was just like, whoa, this is exactly what I need to do in order to, you know, build my team. And it's funny because uh, one of my friends here, uh, I hadn't talked to him probably about a year or so. He, he contacted me and he was telling me about this new health and wellness company that was up and coming and they, they were getting ready to explode out of the gate. And, you know, I told myself, you know, if I was going to dive into this and do this, that, you know, I was going to use all these principles and these strategies and these tactics that I, I was learning over the past year and a half to do this. Because, you know, MLM, their tactics are basically stuck in the 90s. Everything they are doing is so old and they're stuck in the 90s. The home parties, that's, that's not what that I wanted to do and you know as soon as you join an MLM it's just broken right out of the box. Everyone gets the same scripts, everyone gets the same video material, everybody gets the same offer, everybody has the same products and you know once I start realizing that like I felt like I had to make myself different and be different and I and to do that I needed to use these strategies that I just learned over the course of this year and a half um, in order to do so. So I joined this company and I launched, um, start launching my products. And, you know, after the first couple of weeks, there was nothing happened. And then, you know, slowly, 
there was this momentum that started to really, really pick up. I was getting uh, notifications actually on my phone um, to where it was telling me that people were actually, you know, applying to join my downline. And I remember uh, the first time that happened, I, I showed Kim like, you know, babe, look, this is actually like working. And I was like so excited that, you know, I actually had people applying to join my downline. And, you know, yes, it's crazy that, yes, I do have people uh, apply to join my downline. And the reason why I do that, going through that experience where I was contacting all of my family, my friends, my cousins, my elementary school uh, fr friends, my high school friends, you know, going through that process, it, it made me realize and understand that not everybody wants the opportunity, you know, and those are the people that I wanted to recruit, the people who wanted the opportunity, the, the people who really believed in the true duplication of this whole process because, you know, I'm, I'm not going to give you all the secrets here, but if you apply to join my downline, I just give that all the secrets to my downline for free once you uh, are accepted to join my downline. We will give you a phone call and we'll, you know, break down and really see if you are a good fit for our downline. Uh, you know, we just give you all of the strategies and the secrets for free. But once I started realizing that I needed to separate myself and, and use these strategies that I learned, was learning, everything in my life changed, my whole business changed, everything changed using these strategies i was able to you know start to travel more with uh kim uh, i was able to go see my kids and really spend more time with them and really live the dream life that i wanted to live because i started using these tactics and you know i've, I've been doing this for about you know three or four months now um and it's just exciting and, and it is just accelerating and it just continues to get better so if you're interested in not doing the home parties not doing the hotel meetings not doing the three-way phone calls and really truly are interested in how to really truly dip duplicate your mlm business then fill out the application there's 18 questions it should take you no more than three minutes to, to fill out and you know join our team join team be the reason we want to uh really help show you exactly how you can make this system work for you how you can automate your system how you can bring in people who are actually interested in the mlm and the product that you are selling and really really make this duplicatable for you as well so if you're interested we're going to take you through this process once uh, you get inside of our downline. And like I said before, I'm so excited that you guys decided to stop here and learn more about me, learn more about my story and my struggle and what I had to go through in order to help, you know, feed my family and, you know, my financial situation. And I just want to be able to show you the path and show you everything so you don't have to go through those same struggles and those same things that I had to go through in order to make this work for you. So if you're interested with no home parties, no hotel meetings, uh, we don't do none of that and team be the reason. I wanna make sure that you guys get a duplicatable system that you can make work for you as a busy parent as well, okay? So click to join my downline, just fill out the information and I'll see you inside the group. Thank you, take care.